Thanks, Jen. Up next, as I find the right slide deck, we have Bill Pearson from B. Pearson Consulting. Um, and Bill is going to talk to us about the ASHRAE standard and, with, and introduce himself to us. So with that, please join me in welcoming Bill. Okay, who's got the clicker to advance the slides? <laughs> Okay, wow, so I get to take you to lunch, not literally, but to the time for lunch. And uh, it is my pleasure to be here. Uh, it, it, when we talk about having a passion for this subject matter, I hope I fit that role. Uh, as far as a little introduction, I think we have a minute or two. I had a 40 year career. Uh, there we go. Patsy needs to have the disclaimer up there for all of us. But uh, I had a 40-year career as a water treatment professional, and I'm talking about the water treaters that go out and do the boilers, the cooling towers, the closed loops, and the mechanical equipment as opposed to municipal water treatment. But um, I got very enamored and involved with Legionella, so I'm gonna do a little bit like Jen did, maybe expose my age a bit. But it was 1975 when I started my career in water treatment after graduate school, and then of course 76 was when Legionella was discovered uh, in Philadelphia. And I thought it was interesting because at the time, it shortly quickly got uh, associated with cooling towers. And of course I said, well gosh, that's what I'm doing. I'm out here providing water treatment programs for cooling towers, corrosion control, scale control, and general microbial control. But now maybe this is something else. But my academic background was in, in biology, microbiology, and, and medical biochemistry. So. Uh, I just took a, a, a liking to it. So fast forward, I spent the last 25 years of my water treatment career heavily involved uh, with Legionella and involved on, with many of the associations that were taking it up. And the primary one was ASHRAE, uh, who, was, who had a long-standing guideline document. Is anybody familiar with ASHRAE's guideline 12? Guideline 12, if I give the rest of it, dash 2000, that means it came out in the year 2000. So we're talking about it's been out 19 years. So those documents get reviewed every five years real quick. In 2005, Ashray said, it's very important, Legionella. Let's take this guideline and try and get a standard out of it. So that was the beginning of Ashray standard 188, which we have already been talking a great deal about. And it took 10 years, 10 long years, and I hadn't been on that committee every one of those years from the get-go, February of 05 to 015, when it came out, and voila, right in the midst of that outbreak in South Bronx, New York City. So we may have, that's another whole subject, I don't want to digress too much, but you've seen a lot of slides here. So that was my career. Um, uh, I quickly thought I was going to go into consulting work right away, but I had the opportunity to work with a, a very special woman, uh, uh, Dr. Janet Stout at Special Pathogens Laboratory for two years. And then that really set my uh, opportunity to go on out and, and, and consult uh, in, in this field. Uh, Janet gave me a degree in Legionology. So, so I, I appreciate that, as well as I've had many other people I've learned from. So all of these first few slides, I didn't know, Jen, they were in your part, so I'll tell Patsy, we're gonna just fly by them. They, they've been talked about a, a great deal. And we'll get to this picture of me. Uh, what, so this is my uh, start into the talk. Uh, we, I'm going to be joined by a, a colleague, Patrick Racine, because we're going to be talking about the ASHRAE Standard 188, which is all about a risk management process to develop a water management program. And so. I call that the boring part of this subject matter. I'd rather show all the cool pictures of Legionella, showing how it infects amoeba, and, and, and the same way it infects the macrophage in our body, it's supposed to be destroying it, but yet it lives there, and then we get Legionnaire's disease. And by the way, let's do away with this, because I like your question, and it comes up a great deal. Uh, I quit using the term Legionnaire's disease once it's been you know, described and explained. It's Legionella pneumonia. It is pneumonia 
caused by bacteria. It's a bacterial pneumonia. It's pneumonia caused by the bacterium Legionella. The number one bacterial pneumonia, pneumococcal and streptococcal, I think we're all familiar with that. So when we get rid of that, I've had people say, oh yeah, Legionnaire's disease. Yeah, they think of it as some really rare, obscure disease. Wasn't that cured? Didn't they handle that? Didn't they take care of that some time ago? No, it's pneumonia. And I think we are all probably familiar with pneumonia. So uh, get that out of the way. So I'm going to have a colleague, Patrick Racine, because we've got seven steps in a water management plan according to the ASHRAE, the seven elements to develop a water management plan. We're going to go through them step by step. I started to say this is the boring part, but this is an important part because we can talk about all the statistics and the data and all, but ASHRAE 188 is about managing this waterborne pathogen. And they adopted a process to do it. Uh, it doesn't, ASHRAE, who's read ASHRAE 188? Oh, wow, okay, it's especially, uh, so uh, I'm glad. How many pages was it? About, what, 15 or 16 with a lot of introduction off? It's, it's embarrassing to say it took us 10 years to, to generate 16 pages for a standard, but uh, it was because there was a lot of issues with, with Legion. We talked about testing, et cetera. But it was, at the end of the day, it was a process, a risk management process to handle this thing. So there's seven steps, so you don't have to listen to me do all of them. I'm going to do a couple, the first two, uh, and then I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Patrick Racine, who's also uh, an ASHRAE member and, and on 188. And then Patsy also is going to finish up with a couple uh, components of the uh, uh, water management plan according to ASHRAE. So, I have to show a couple slides that I prepared, even though you've seen it, because I put numbers to mine, and I made them a little bit more color. But this is stunning. This really is stunning. This took everybody by surprise in, in 016 when the CDC came out with the, 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 the toolkit, you know, to marry up with ASHRAE 188 and their vital signs to give us a lot of data about this thing called Legionnaire's disease. Oops, excuse me, Legionella pneumonia. And so we see this trend, and it's significant now. These are the latest numbers. And so uh, someone already pointed out 7,500 you know, cases, reported cases. And that is the tip of the iceberg. A lot of professionals think that this number can be five, tenfold higher uh, in actual cases, because most of the cases are that occurring out you know, sporadic and not reported in an outbreak. So this, this is pretty impressive to see this, but the incidence, you know, the number per 100,000 population, that's moved from 0.4 to 2.2. What is it in Canada? I think, I, I think someone had a slide, it's like 1.8 or two. Anyway, we measure all this by the incidence. And so the next three slides, I don't want you to get lost in the slide itself. You're not gonna be quizzed on the 50 states of the US. But this is from the CDC, uh, gave a talk with Clarissa Lucas uh, at the Water Research Foundation, and they had these three slides. I think they're great. This is 2007, here's 2012, here's 2017. Five year periods, and obviously what you're seeing is the incidence reported per 100,000 in the US, and this is mirrored a lot in, in Canada and, and other parts of the world. It, that graph tells you that it's rising. I'd rather show you the light states where low incidence are getting dark and the dark states are getting darker. And you kind of see it's throughout the US, but you see where the heaviest population is, in that Northeast, some of the Midwest there, um, uh, the older parts of the US where the infrastructures are gonna be older, a lot of population, and so it is significant. So several, this is the benefit I get uh, of having six people, you know, half a dozen people talk before me, excellent presentations. I'm gonna be reiterating a lot of the great points they brought up. It makes me feel good because I put those into my presentation. But I keep saying we got to think Legionella now. We, we have to learn, I think Brian said we have to learn from our mistakes and how to deal with Legionella and control it and put that information into our water management plans. But with, with a Legionella knowledge base now, we need to start kind of thinking about what a waterborne pathogen is. So when we're dealing with water and its use 
with that knowledge of Legionella, yeah, it's a bacterium. It can cause uh, Legionella pneumonia. You get it by inhaling all. So let's start thinking about our water use. It likes warm temperatures and all. So we have, we have a, a, a repeating theme that's been going here through all the presentations. And that's why I've kind of come up with a, an acronym. Don't we need another acronym? I, I, I found about another half dozen Canadian acronyms I knew nothing about. So this is what I call a touchdown for you. Now this, I know it's kind of biased being sports, but so TDFU, a touchdown for you. I always remember those four things. We've heard keep the hot water hot, cold, cold, but temperature, disinfectant, flow, and use. We've heard about water flow, the age of water, stagnation, dead legs, all adding to biofilm. These are just repeated things that we've been saying. So a touchdown for you, if you remember that acronym, TDFU, you remember, oh yeah, temperature is important. The disinfectant level or lack of is very important in the degrading of the water, low or none. And then of course the flow, age, stagnation, dead legs, and then biofilm we've talked about. So uh, here we are uh, in the first part uh, of the uh, water safety team. I think I have a slide in here a little bit earlier, uh, uh, later, that talks about uh, ASHRAE says water management program, or the acronym WMP. Uh, World Health Organization, I think, came up with the, the water safety plan. So it's a water safety management plan. They're all the one and the same. They're not different. It's the process of developing this program. So you can see the ASHRAE standard 188, legionellosis already been defined. Risk management for building water systems. So that's the first key part is it's for all the systems, not just cooling towers and not just the potable water, not just the cold water or the hot water, all the water and any devices. And so uh, we've got this standard here. Oh, here's my slide. It was a little bit out of order. So it's a written plan that's going to identify hazard conditions and the steps that we can take to control it. Uh, and, and control the growth and spread of Legionella. And I think we've been saying it, it's a preventable disease, folks. We can prevent this disease by recognizing it and thanking Legionella uh, with it. So having a water safety management program is now an industry standard for large buildings and healthcare facilities in the United States. That's a direct quote uh, from the CDC. Okay, we've seen this picture here, and this is uh, where we've got the seven steps. And that whole standard 188 had one single document, uh, uh, figure in it, one, one, uh, one single uh, figure one. There's no figure two. And it's the elements of a water management program. So this is what it looks like. And the CDC toolkit, which I, I, I can talk forever about the CDC and how important I think it was that they uh, really turn the focus onto uh, 188 and, and the water management process and plan. And so this is a graphic from the CDC's toolkit that gives those same seven steps that you see in the ASHRAE 188 uh, figure. And they also, if those who are familiar with ASHRAE 188, carved out a, a special discussion, what we call Annex A, for the healthcare industry, because there are differences. They didn't get off easy. And it's not that they were given a different, path, an easier pathway to go through, but healthcare facilities deal with managing disease and, and, and risk uh, on a daily basis. So they kind of had their own language. So if you look at Annex A, it's got the same aspects of the rest of the base document, 188. Uh, it's just kind of written more for the healthcare industry. So here it is, what it looks like in the toolkit, and it talks a bit more about that. So here we are. I'm going to cover uh, in the next uh, 10, 15 minutes. We cannot go in depth, and, and, uh, but uh, we want to cover each step, and I'll get the pack pick. I'm going to do step one is establish a team, and uh, you'll see that step two is going to be describing the system. So we'll go into step one. And I'm kind of like Jen here. I've got that same glasses problem about distance here. So we, this is where we're going to establish the team, what we call the program team. And this is an incredible, all the steps are important, but this is where it all starts. 
You've got to have a team. Uh, there's no set number of people. That's obviously going to be dictated by the, the, the size of the facility. You may have a small, very small facility. You may have literally one person could do it if that person kind of had all these attributes. But at the very top, you see what I call the facilitator, the leader. You have to have someone who has the ability to oversee the program and the authority to make certain decisions that the program team uh, comes, comes up with in making the water management program. And a lot of times that involves spending money, so they need to have the authority to, uh, to spend money. So what I see, um, that's a very important aspect. And then what you're going to do, and in, in, uh, get, we'll get to it in a minute when you have to describe the systems, this is all about knowing about the building's water systems. And I think we've seen a lot of pictures and graphics. Jen had some, some great ones on what all is entailed there, not just the, the potable water uh, and all the uh, outlets for it, uh, shower heads and, and ice machines even, and uh, uh, your, your sinks and, and things. You have other systems, the cooling towers. Uh, you could have decorative fountains and water features. So we need to have someone I put some emphasis here that has knowledge of the water systems. Many times that's the, what we call the engineering or the maintenance folks. Okay. Now, these two are together. You don't have to have an, one individual for these, but this is probably, I think, where most facilities aren't yet prepared. And I'm not trying to promote business for Jen or myself or anybody else, but if there's one area where you probably have to have a consultant it may be in this ability to identify control locations and control limits, ability to identify and take corrective actions as they relate to legionellosis, as they relate to legionella bacteria. And many times that's not, you know, at the facility. I foresee this changing certainly over time, but initially with, with ASHRAE 188 out, that's what we've seen. The facilities at this point, this is where they can fail because it's gonna be critical that you have to have some knowledge uh, of, of legionellosis uh, and legionella in order to do that part. The others all fall into place. Again, one person can have the ability to monitor the program, confirm the performance, and to communicate it. So this is kind of uh, the importance of the team uh, for in step one. Uh, just a quick summary, a take home here, and I'm glad you're all gonna have the, the uh, presentation later. I don't like to read line for line, but it is important, you know, that you that we understand the what we call the core competencies, the roles and responsibilities needed for that effective water management or water safety management plan team. And uh, you need to have that facilitator, the leader, and then include people who know about the water systems. Uh, I like down at the bottom, I think I've got public health should educate and participate in water safety management uh, plan teams. Don't be afraid if it's a facility, a building, certainly if it's a healthcare facility, they might think of this right away, but if it's a large building that says we need a water management plan, we're a 50 story building, we're a casino, we're something else, been associated with outbreaks, but we just don't have inside knowledge, you know, of Legionella. So, uh, you know, get, get public health involved. Okay. Now I'm gonna go into the second part of the water management plan, uh, the uh, elements of a water management plan. And once you've got your team together, let's put them to work. Everyone's got roles and responsibilities. And the first thing they're gonna do is go through the building, literally, in some cases, and, and, and describe the building. Uh, initially, um, and that, here's the icon for that that we'll be using on slides. And so this is where we are, step two. We're going to describe the building. Uh, and the ASHRAE standard, it first of all starts off with a little bit different description of the building. It says, describe the building to see if you have to have a water management plan. And this is a graphic right out of that CDC toolkit. It doesn't get any simpler than having you know, a, a, a yes or no question. And this is spelled out in the ASHRAE standard in terms of Number one, 
Is it a healthcare facility? If, if you're a healthcare facility, you don't have to go anymore. Uh, or if you're a part of a building where you treat people who have certain you know, uh, uh, critical medical conditions, you're gonna put yes, you have to have a water management plan, a water safety management plan for the potable water systems, hot and cold for that. There's a few other parts. Is your building 10 stories or larger, including the subgrade? Is it uh, 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 have a centralized hot water system? And is it one that's primarily used for, you know, set aside for elder, elderly people? I call them experienced people. But this will be your long-term uh, facilities I mean, retirement communities. And then it goes into the devices. This is more characteristics of the building. Those type of buildings are associated with Legionella uh, being colonized in the systems and, and associated with outbreaks. Then you go into the devices. First device, does, do you have a cooling tower? Check that. And you have to have a water management plan for the cooling tower, not necessary for the building. If you're not a healthcare facility, if you're a four-story uh, library or bank downtown, and you don't have a centralized hot water system and any of the other characteristics, you don't need to have a water management plan for your potable systems, but you do for that cooling tower because cooling towers are associated with it. That question was asked uh, so much to the ASHRAE committee that there was an addendum that came out to, to a response. Uh, if, if you had that type of a building that had no characteristics, but you did have a cooling tower, you have to uh, have a plan for the cooling tower. And so, and then you go down to the other devices. We talked about the hot tubs and decorative fountains and, and other what we call aerosolizing devices. So this is the, the bottom line. This is ASHRAE 188 section 5.1 where it says building survey or the systems. You have to implement a water management plan uh, uh, for uh, any of the uh, buildings that have any of these systems. Actually, CDC had it reversed how they went to the, help, to the type of characteristics first, then the systems. And then 5.2 in ASHRAE talks about the characteristics of the building, 10 stories, healthcare facility, et cetera. And you're watching the time, aren't you? <laughs> okay. So um, uh, describing the building is, is, is just what it says. You, know, uh, you need to include the details like uh, where, the, where you're getting your water supply, literally where it comes into the building, then you're gonna trace it through the building and how is the water used, or some people say, how is the water processed in the building? Uh, it, it becomes potable water, it may go to the cooling towers and, and be non-potable. Uh, you'll have backflow preventers when that happens, so you're gonna be capturing all this. The CDC website says every building is different, obviously depending on factors of structure, age, location, occupants, et cetera, so each one needs a tailored program. So you're not going to be able to, uh, you can have a template, but you're not going to be able to really cookie cut your water management program. Each one needs to be a tailored program. So this is what it looks like in the CDC toolkits description. This is a uh, right out of the, the, uh, the toolkit, and this has a, a process flow diagram that starts with that municipal water coming in, goes through a backflow preventer. That's, you can see the legend, that's the two lines then becomes part of the fire suppression system. Uh, always goes to a black flow preventer when you get it from the building because guess what? The city doesn't want any of your stuff. They may deliver you bad stuff, but they don't want it coming back. So, uh, so you then go on out to all the other distributors. Don't think that the process flow diagram, it's not a plumbing diagram. You don't have to have the detail, uh, uh, the, the size of the plumbing, etc. unless it's... Uh, uh, a, a, a note to be made, just where is it going? So this is uh, how we have our describing the process flow diagram. This is one for the, the potable water or what we sometimes call the domestic water. Uh, and then you've got labels for it. This was actually a building and this is from the ASHRAE standard. Uh, uh, this was a, a building that was uh, some government building in Texas and the committee, the ASHRAE 188 committee, uh, got on a phone call and conducted <laughs> uh, a, to describe the building with the facilities maintenance people there and came up with a diagram here. 
And so the same thing for the non-potable utility water systems. And so let's get some takeaways for describing the building. I'm trying to leave plenty of time for uh, us to, for some questions, but you need to carefully consider your building's risk factors uh, to manage your water safety. Uh, potable and non-potable systems, you have to list all, and you have to highlight how water is received and processed, and then the flow diagrams. As I said, they should be you know, sufficient uh, in detail to enable you to see the whole process and see where it's going, and then to, because you're gonna take this flow diagrams, this whole step, and then the next step that Pat will go, now you're gonna look for areas, and this is where you need to have that knowledge base I mentioned. You're gonna look for areas where you could have hazardous conditions as related to Legionella or where it, it, could, it could be a low temperature in a hot water tank, it could be a cross connection or something else and, and uh, be pointing that out. So, um, Pat, <laughs> she's already laughing. Patsy made sure that every one of our steps you always end up with document, document, and document everything. An effective water management program is gonna have a ton of documentation. Uh, someone had asked a question a little bit earlier. Do I have a minute or two? Two minutes, okay. Uh, you know, what else could we be doing? You know, we're doing this, but what else could we be doing in our management, safety management plan? Well, we will get to that step, the, the validation, the verification and validation you're going to know if you're doing the right stuff if you perform that step properly. So I'll set that up for Patsy. So with that said, I tried to rush through with a quick introduction. We didn't give you the full background on ASHRAE 188. Uh, we'll just save that for if it comes out in question and answer. And so I can turn it over to Patrick. I think we're going to lunch. Oh, we're going to go to lunch. That's right. So we get a lunch break and then Patrick will take over from there.